even though gold is at a new high, it's a contrarian investment to buy it. See, normally when something's at a new high, it's because everybody's buying it, right? So it wouldn't be a contrarian investment to buy a new high, right? You would be doing what everybody else is doing. You would be jumping on the bandwagon. But you can buy gold today and silver and be a contrarian, even though gold is at an all-time record high. <laughs> That's how skeptical people are, right? There's an old saying that a bull market climbs a wall of worry. Well, that's what you have in, in gold. People are not optimistic. They're still pessimistic. According to forecasts from trading economics global macro models and analyst projections, gold is anticipated to reach $2,400 by the conclusion of this quarter. While gold prices did manage to move higher during the first half of the shortened Memorial Day week, the days were characterized mainly by a march toward Friday's PCE report. Precious metals investors look to the Fed's preferred inflation metric to gauge the likely path of interest rates and the prospects for further gains for gold. Peter Schiff is an American stockbroker and renowned market analyst who has firmly established himself as a prominent figure in the world of finance. In his analysis, Peter Schiff emphasizes the significant rise in gold and silver prices, highlighting that these developments are being overlooked due to distractions from the stock market and cryptocurrency buzz. However, Schiff observes that this lack of attention actually makes the gains more significant and authentic. Despite the rising prices of precious metals, Schiff notices that Wall Street analysts remain skeptical, refraining from recommending mining stocks. Instead, they've downgraded major gold companies like Newmont and Barrick, suggesting a cap on gold's upside at $2,000, as mentioned by Schiff. Newmont's shares jumped almost 12.5% on April 25th after the company reported its first quarter earnings results, which exceeded Wall Street's predictions. The company's reported sales of $4 billion rose 50.2% annually, surpassing estimates by 9.2%. Adjusted EPS of $0.55 improved 37.5% year-over-year, topping Wall Street's forecasts by an impressive 57.1%. In Schiff's forecast, the ongoing rally is poised for a considerable extension before any substantial pullback materializes. The latest Kitco Newsweekly Gold Survey has the overwhelming majority of industry experts believing gold prices could reach or surpass their all-time highs. At the same time, retail traders are a little more restrained on the prospects of precious metals. Now, we present you the clips of Peter Schiff's insights from his recent video. Before we continue to delve into this discussion, Please subscribe to our channel and activate the bell icon for timely updates. Well, while the media, of course, was focused on the May gains in the stock market, they really didn't pay any attention to the gains in the precious metals market. Because as far as I'm concerned, that's where the significant move was. Because we saw gold during the month of May rise to a new all-time record high, even though it, it ended the month. Uh, on a bit of a decline. But if I look at the price right now on Sunday night uh, for the price of gold, we're still trading above 2,300. We're 2,328. So a solid breakout in the month of May. And, and more particular or more significant is the breakout in the price of silver, which went north of $30 an ounce and never looked back. It got as high as $32.50, I believe and then pulled back, but it never even got back below 30. It's held up above 30 and closed the month above 30. So that is extremely significant. But I think the strength in the stock market is causing investors really not to pay attention. And of course, all the continued noise uh, surrounding Bitcoin. This time, it's really not Bitcoin, but Ethereum, because everybody is now focusing on the fact that the Ethereum ETF is going to be approved. And there's a whole bunch of these ETFs that are in the queue. And so we've seen the original or the initial breakout to new highs in gold, above 30 in silver, and nobody has noticed it. It's basically happened without any fanfare, you know, completely in obscurity. And to me, that's what makes it that much more real because. Even though gold is at a new high, 
it's a contrarian investment to buy it. See, normally when something's at a new high, it's because everybody's buying it, right? So it wouldn't be a contrarian investment to buy a new high, right? You would be doing what everybody else was doing. You would be jumping on the bandwagon. But you can buy gold today and silver and be a contrarian, even though gold is at an all-time record high. That's how skeptical people are, right? There's an old saying that a bull market climbs a wall of worry. Well, that's what you have in, in gold. People are not optimistic. They're still pessimistic. And again, that's why we haven't seen any of these Wall Street analysts this month. Even though we had a surge in the price of gold and silver during the month, nobody came out and recommended any of these mining stocks. Nobody. Nobody upgraded any of these mining stocks. I mean, the last um, movements that were made were downgrades. They downgraded Newmont. They downgraded Barrick. The two biggest gold companies in the world were downgraded when gold was at 2000. It's moved up 20%. And if you remember, the rationale for the downgrades was that there was no more upside in gold. Everybody assumed that 2000 was the top, that we couldn't go any higher. And so there was no point in buying gold stocks. What was I saying at the time? The 2000 was the floor. There was no point in selling gold stocks because gold couldn't go any lower. We were at the floor. And now we're 20% higher approximately, or we got to 20% higher. But none of the companies that downgraded these stocks have come back and said, oops, my bad. You know, we were wrong. Uh, and now we're going to raise the recommendation back. No, no, they haven't even acknowledged that they got anything wrong yet. So we still got a long way to go uh, in this rally. I think before we have any kind of meaningful pullback. I mean, the pullbacks we're seeing now are not meaningful. I mean, they could be meaningful to somebody who's just day trading and trading in futures. But for real buyers, right, of people who are buying gold and silver, it means nothing. There's not going to be, I don't think, a big enough pullback to wait. People should just be buying uh, the metals. They should be buying the miners. And un unfortunately, they're not getting this, these, these recommendations uh, from, from the financial community. Regarding recent economic data, Peter Schiff expressed concern highlighting weak figures such as the Chicago PMI. He noted the Chicago PMI's plunge to levels not seen since the early stages of the COVID-19 pandemic, suggesting a significantly weakened economy. Gold prices traded flat on Monday as investors braced for critical U.S. economic reports that could provide insights into the economy's health. This comes from recent inflation data, suggesting that the Federal Reserve may have room for rate cuts later in 2024. Moreover, Schiff warned that the sharp rise in the trade deficit signaled the economy's inability to meet demand. Despite currency traders' current indifference, he predicted these factors would strain the dollar and worsen inflation. Let's get back to the interview. And in fact, we got some very weak economic data on Friday that came out later in the morning. We got the Chicago PMI. Now, the forecast was for an improvement in May from the April number, which was pretty bad. The April number was 37.9, and the expectation was for 40.8, which would have been an improvement, but still a weak number. Instead, the actual number came in at 35.4. That is a horrific number. That is lower than the low end of the range, which went from a low of 38.3 to a high of 44. So some people expected a number as high as 44. Other analysts that were pessimistic thought it might be as low as 38.3. And instead, we got 35.4, which way below the low end. In order to find a Chicago PMI this low, it was four years ago in early 2020, about May of 2020. Now, what was going on in May of 2020? Well, in case you don't remember, it was COVID. It was the lockdown. We shut the entire economy down. And so you have to go back to an economic shutdown to find a Chicago PMI that was this low. What does that tell you? They're talking about this strong economy. We have an exceptionally weak economy that has only been weaker when it was shut down completely. So not only do we have much stronger inflation numbers than what the Fed estimated, but the economy is actually a lot weaker. Despite all this talk about a strong economy, the evidence uh, supports 
a weak economy. And in fact, we got more evidence of a weak economy with the international trade deficit numbers, which were horrific. Again, nobody talks about these numbers but me. No one seems to care. But the merchandise trade deficit exploded in April to a multi-year high. It was supposed to be $92.5 billion, which would have been a little bit worse than the $91.8 billion from March. Well, they revised the $91.8 billion up to $92.3 billion. But the April deficit was $99.4 billion, a huge widening of the trade deficit because of a 3.1% increase in imports and only a 0.5% increase in exports. Now, again, this evidence is a weak economy. The economy was too weak to produce the goods that we need. And so we relied more heavily on imports because our weak economy couldn't produce the stuff we needed. And so we had to rely on stronger economies abroad to produce that stuff. But not only does the exploding trade deficit in goods evidence a weak economy, but it evidences more inflation because we're not producing as much stuff. So we have to import it. But less stuff means higher prices, just like more money means higher prices. We have more demand, we have less supply. And of course, eventually the dollar is going to collapse under the weight of all these trade deficits. You know, once upon a time when currency traders actually cared about these trade deficits, the dollar would be clobbered on a day with this bad a trade deficit. No one cares anymore. But ultimately, these trade deficits are going to weigh on the dollar. The dollar is going to fall, and that's going to push up prices even more because now we're going to need more dollars to buy all these imports. And in fact, foreigners won't need as many dollars to buy the stuff that we make. And so that'll bid up the prices of the stuff that we export, as well as the stuff that we import. So this was a weak economic number, weak inflation. Analysts are highly bullish on the future of gold prices, with Citigroup analysts forecasting a $3,000 target for the precious metal over the next 6 to 18 months. Meanwhile, Goldman Sachs, GS analysts referred to the gold market as an unshakable bull market and increased their price target for the yellow metal from $2,300 to $2,700 per ounce by the end of the year. Following these developments, how do you envision the future of gold and silver investments amid evolving economic conditions? Drop your thoughts in the comment section below. If you find this video informative, don't forget to support our channel and turn on notifications to stay informed about our latest videos. See you in the next video.